Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Cohen from Phoenix Star YT and welcome to a very different kind of video. This is a tutorial on how you can set up your own Minecraft server inside of a VPS or a virtual private server. A virtual private server is a server that is running in the cloud and it's going to allow you to uh, store or set up all kinds of very neat little projects and things that you want to run from within the cloud. And why exactly am I using a VPS for this? Well, a VPS is nice because it allows you to run a bungee cord network, which I will get to in a later video. But for the time being, let's just uh, get started with a regular Minecraft server so you get an idea of how that is going to work. So, there are a few things that we're going to need. First of all, we're going to need an actual VPS for this. And what you're also going to need is a little program called PuTTY, which is what I'm going to use for this entire video. Uh, so, what is this? This is a SSH and Telnet client that allows you to connect to your VPS and run it in a little command prompt like this. So, um, what this is going to do for you, it's basically exactly like what you would find on, say, the command prompt on Windows or the terminal in macOS and Linux. So, that is basically it is. And uh, you are going to use this to browse through the file, uh, the file explorer thing. Um, the file system is what it's called uh, of uh, your Linux environment. Because yes, this uh, uses a Linux environment to run. This particular one is using 1804, but you can also install uh, something like Debian or I believe some VPSs even support full Windows or Manjaro. Um, that's going to depend greatly on what VPS you're going to get though. Uh, I'm using Ubuntu 18.04 on this. A little bit outdated, but it still works wonderfully. And Buddy and Putty is what I'm going to use uh, for it. And uh, if you want to um, uh, connect to your VPS, it is just as simple as typing in the IP address that you receive in your email from the VPS service and uh, click connect, type in root, type in your password and you're good to go. So Putty is what I'm going to use to actually um, connect to my VPS server, but we're not there yet. There is also something else that you're going to need to even work with the file system inside of your Linux environment. And the program that I'm going to use for this is WinSCP. Why WinSCP? Because it's similar to something like what I'm going to show you right now. It's, some, it's similar to something like this. This is FileZilla. And FileZilla is pretty much the exact same thing as WinSCP, but I found WinSCP is a lot more stable than FileZilla, and it's going to be a lot more straightforward and a lot uh, better to work with than something like FileZilla. Of course, um, it's entirely up to you what you're going to use uh, to browse through the file system of your Linux environment inside of uh, PuTTY, but uh, I greatly recommend you use WinSCP for this. One great thing about WinSCP also is what I'm going to show you right now. You see this, right? So I'm going to close out of this and uh, WinSCP actually allows you to make a desktop shortcut to, uh, uh, to your server right here. So I can open this and I immediately have the file system of my uh, VPS to my disposal so I can immediately work with it. Uh, of course, you can very easily start up a new session. If you don't have a um, a server on your desktop, you can open WinSCP here and you immediately get this on your screen. You can just uh, connect to your VPS with this. Type in your address, your username and your password and you're good to go. But that's not what we're going to do in this very video because I already have the Minecraft server on my desktop. So we're going to work with this. This is what we're going to put in uh, the most of our work for the Minecraft server that we're going to set up. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make a new folder in here. So what you want to do is you right click here. You go to new folder or you can just hit F7 on your keyboard. And we are going to call this 
uh, folder tutorial. I already have a, um, a folder for just the micro server that I'm running for the public of which the IP address will be in the description down below. And I also have a test server that I primarily use to test plugins and stuff like that in. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to make an entirely new folder called tutorial. I'm opening this up. And the very first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to uh, download a spigot or a craft bucket that is compatible with 1.17 because 1.17 is the latest version available. So we want our server to run on that. So I have a spigot 1.17 file right here. What you want to do is you want to um, hold it and drag it to the right. And now the file is being uploaded into our VPS. Now uploading your files to your VPS takes a little while. Uh, it kind of depends on how big the files are that you're going to download or upload to your VPS or to your computer. But uh, because this is not the biggest file in the world, I think it's like 44 megabytes. Actually, it says it right here, 44 megabytes. Uh, so that's not too bad, but there are also times where I had to download uh, folders of like 10 gigabytes to my computer uh, for backup uh, reasons so I can run it on a VPS. But uh, that's an entirely different story for another day. So what we want to do now is we want to rename this file to server.jar and I'm going to show you right now. So I'm gonna put this to the right real quick. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this file right here. So uh, this is a run.bat file that you can run on your computer. Uh, if you're running something like Windows, you can easily run the run.bat file uh, from within your file explorer and it will open a command prompt and whatnot. Uh, Linux works a little bit differently. So what you need to do is you would have to install uh, Java inside of your Linux environment and I'll uh, leave a bunch of tutorials and stuff in the description down below so you can see how you can do that. Uh, I already have Java installed so I'm not gonna do that on here. But basically what you want to do is you want to take this code, this little line of code that I'm also gonna leave in the description in case you're going to need it. Um, so you want to take this, you copy it, you open up PuTTY. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to type in CD tutorial. So now we are mounted into our tutorial folder here. And what we want to do now is that if you have Java installed, you type in sudo and you right click. And then you can see that the entire code that I just copied has been pasted onto the command line, you hit enter, and now it's loading its libraries and it's going to put a bunch of stuff into this folder right here. So I'm just going to uh, put these two side to side so you can see exactly what is going on. And as you can see, I already have uh, had a server running over here. And the reason why I had this running uh, uh, before I even started recording is because I'm setting up a creative server for people to join so that they could build whatever they want on there. So we are getting an error uh, saying that we need to accept the EULA uh, or agree to the EULA for the micro server to even be able to run. And uh, you can't see any of the files in this folder right now, but you will after you refresh the folder by clicking this button or hitting Control R. And now you will see all of these files right here. So we see this EULA.txt and what we want to do is we want to open it we uh, put the, we set the EULA to true, we save it, and now we can close this and we can run the entire command again. And what it's going to do right now is it's going to generate a world and it's going to generate everything that the micro server needs to run properly. And this can take a few minutes, so I'm just gonna uh, cut it from here and we'll be back as soon as everything is up and running. All right, so the server is up and running right now. And what we can do now is we can refresh this folder again. And now you will find all of the folders you're going to need to get a proper server running. So uh, what we can do now from here is we can uh, mess around with this. But what I want to do first is I want to make sure that the server is actually working. So I have Minecraft open right here. And now what I can do is I can 
joined the Minecraft server right here. I already had the IP added to my game before I even uh, thought about joining the server. But if you want to add your server, you can just throw in the IP address that you get with the VPS. And you can uh, put in the server port and then you can join it right here. And uh, then it should say a micro server and you can hit join server and then you should be able to join the server. Which if everything went right. Yeah, that is looking very promising. So this is what should happen when you have a micro server ready to run. Now, uh, from here on out, I can just play the game the way that it's intended uh, in, te in the bleh, I can't talk the way that it's intended to be. Uh, so uh, we can uh, walk around, we can uh, chop some trees down over there, we uh, have a pretty good looking world ex uh, actually for this, uh, this server. I would keep this if, um, uh, if this wasn't a tutorial server and I had to throw it away uh, afterwards, but you know, this is actually not looking too bad. I would really much uh, like for a world uh, like this to be in my own micro server, but that is not what we're going to, uh, uh, to do today. So what we're going to do from here actually is I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. And what we're going to do now is we're going to run the help command in the uh, in this command prompt here. As you can see it is behaving exactly as it should when you're running a micro server from within a command prompt on your PC. So what we can do from here is we can go op phoenix star Oh, I can't type Phoenix Star YT. And now we can, and now you should see made Phoenix Star YT a server operator. And now I can go to creative mode. I can take a netherite sword and I can dominate everything and everyone that is coming into my way. <laughs> but yeah, this is the kind of thing that you can do when you have a, um, a VPS server up and running. Uh, it is very simple to do this kind of thing, but. There is one thing to consider if you are running a micro server inside of a VPS. So we have this um, uh, this putty session open, right? But what happens when we close it? What happens when we hit the X, we hit OK, the server gets closed. So how are we going to prevent this? Well, there are several ways you can do this. There are some uh, micro server hosts that offer the option to run a VPS from either their regular server console or they have the exact same method they uh, that I have right here with the putty VPS and everything. Uh, so they so you can uh, run a pterodactyl uh, host in there. I don't have that in this particular case so I would have to do something different and uh, I don't want to open my outlook. What the frick is this? So. What I want to do is I want to run putty again. I'm going to open my server. I'm going to log in using my root and using my password. That was not my password. This is my password. So now that I have this running, what do we want to do now? Well, we are going to use a program called screen. And what exactly is screen? Well, screen is a program that allows you to keep a section running uh, from the cloud so this is very much what I would recommend using if you are going to run a Minecraft server inside of a VPS and you have to use this method uh, so what we're going to do from here is we are going to start up the Minecraft server again CD tutorial and then we're going to run the exact same command that I just ran the Minecraft server is going to start up and if all went well, if I type it, if I type in control A plus D, it should be uh, closing the session, but it is not going to completely shut it down. I'll show you what I mean in just a second when the server is starting back up. So allow the server to start up again and I'll be back in a sec. All right, so with the server running again, what I can do now is I can join the server again from here. And here's where the really interesting part comes in. So uh, the uh, so screen uses a, uh, so a number of key commands that you can run inside of the command line. 
So uh, there are several that you can use for this. And the one that we're going to use for this particular instance is CTRD. And you can see that the, uh, that the screen is detached from this point right here, .vps. And what we can do now is we can type in screen dash ls. And it's going to show you a list of all of the screen sessions that you have opened inside of it. So what we can do now is we can run screen dash r and then we can run this one. And it's completely reattached the session that I just had running. So this is a uh, pretty, pretty hectic uh, thing to do. Uh, it's not the most ideal situation to be in if you had to do it like this. But this is the only method that I have of uh, keeping the server running 24-7. It could cause some issues though. Uh, I've had uh, some instances where I had to completely restart the server manually because it just randomly shut down for whatever reason. So that is one thing to keep in mind if you're going to do the exact same thing that I just did. Uh, it's not that big of a deal, but it is still something worth considering if you're going to run a Minecraft server the way that I'm doing it. But, uh, yeah, that is very much how you set up a Minecraft server inside of a VPS. Uh, next time, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to show you how you can run a Minecraft server inside of a bungee cord network, how you can connect multiple servers inside of one bungee cord network, and how you can run it inside of your VPS as well. Because I think that is going to be very interesting for people who want to run a bungee cord server themselves inside of a VPS. And yes, I do recommend you run a VPS if you want to set up a bungee cord network. And I'm going to explain that in the next video. But until then, uh, I think that's been it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like, subscribe to the Phoenix Star YT channel, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching, and stay passionate.